stop, stop. The desert has a way of testing even the most determined travelers. As we've traveled through Baja, California in our camper van, it's easy to get stuck on the white sand beaches here. But there is more to Baja than crystal clear waters. The deserts here hold a mysterious treasure for those bold or stupid enough to try and find them on their own. Good morning. It is our last day on this beach today. I've just come from morning paddleboard. Two or three mornings here, there have been dolphins out here in the bay, like huge, huge pods of them. But today it looks like it's just me and the pelicans. <gasps> they just come swooping so low to the water. And then all you can hear around you is just this like, psh, 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 as they keep diving in for fish. There's probably 15, 20 pelicans here right now. Good morning. Good morning. You might notice the beach is a little quieter than last week. Yesterday, Chris and Marianne left as they prepared to ship their van to Japan. It was an emotional goodbye to some of our dearest friends. And we also say goodbye to Nate and Kim, new friends we met last week, but who we love already. Last week, Nate was teaching Ben how to fish, and before he left, gave him one of his fishing rods. We're gonna miss you guys, and I'm sure our paths will cross again. And next time, hopefully we'll be catching dinner. But yeah, we are just coming out on our last dog walk. Right behind this beach, there's this huge like mangrove flat area, which has been perfect for walking these guys. Yeah, it's our last dog walk here. Can't believe it, but we are off today because believe it or not, there is a lot more to Baja than just white sand beaches. All good things come to an end. So if you're wondering why we're heading north again and not going to explore the south tip, is because when we finally get up to Alaska and start the Pan American Highway, we're gonna be coming back down this way and we're gonna completely miss this part and explore the south properly then. And then we get to see both parts without rushing through because Baja is big. To get from the top to the bottom is 20 hours. It's huge, so yeah. yeah. And we don't have that much time, so. Okay. Although we have just spent two weeks in one beach. Yeah, if we hadn't spent two <laughs> weeks in one beach, maybe but we don't want to spend all the time in Baja driving. just driving. Exactly. We've made it back to the little oasis of Mulahe. This is where you come to stock up on your food, on supplies, and we're going to get some fresh water. Agua purificada. Hola, buenos dias. So in some towns, you can find these little water purification businesses. They often fill up the big jugs for drinking water and some of them have a hose so you can connect it to your water tank which is really handy it's just finding some that you can actually drive into because obviously in these little towns the roads are quite like narrow Mulehay is like a classic oasis for a film so all these beautiful colorful houses the palm trees it's on this river that runs out into the sea it's really really picturesque and beautiful So look, we have our own palapa. It's a bit more run down than the one we had before. No. Oh. oh my God, I can actually move it. Can you hear that? It's definitely not a beach where you'd come to sunbathe, paddleboard. It's very rocky. And it, I guess it's where all like, the fishermen come to bring their catch and everything. And there's like an abandoned house over there. But it's still so beautiful. Perfect for the night. Yeah? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> When I said Baja isn't all white sand beaches and blue water, this isn't exactly what I meant. I've really gone through some weird time warp into a different place. 
We were only 20 minutes down the road this morning in that hot sunshine, glassy waters. It feels like there's a storm coming in. So this is what the van will look like when I finally mastered how to fish. I'll be catching fish after fish after fish after fish. Well, look at all these fish skeletons. No, no, no. <laughs> Get away. Right, stop it. Dude. Stop it. They're trigger fish and they eat coral. Oh, right, okay. Look at their teeth. Oh, don't <laughs> touch it for a bit. <laughs> what have you got? That's a big stick. That's a very big stick. Good girl. Come well on. then, get it. I think I found it. I've been on the hunt ever since we got to Baja for the perfect shell. It needs to have these like ridges and then be perfectly like intact here and not chipped or broken off. I think I found it. Well done. Okay, so we have heard on the grapevine that hidden in the deserts of Baja are some ancient treasures. And they're quite difficult to get to, which might be why they're not the first thing that you hear of when someone talks about Baja. In fact, what we want to go and see today is 30 kilometers down a dirt road that isn't even on Google Maps. We've had to find it through blogs, reviews, and satellite view. And at the end of this 30 kilometer dirt road is a ranch. And then we ask at the ranch, and then after that we have no idea. Sounds so, good. I know where the road is on Google Maps, and I'm 99% sure we'll find it okay but okay. I'm gonna have to download offline maps because I don't want us to get stuck out in the desert but it should be fun, I'm quite looking forward to this. Perfect. A bit of a change from the beach. The last two and a half weeks of beach life we're heading off into the dusty deserts. It looks like a tornado is just hitting. It is so windy. So, so windy out. So it'll be interesting driving down this road what it's like. Let's get going because it, we're running on Cheska time and that means we're late. I'm not late, I'm just on time. You're just ridiculously early. I'm on time I'm... is the first late. Oh. <laughs> That's not true, I'm just on time. Ben is ridiculously early. I think I mentioned this before, but we've been to the cinema before and got put into the end credits of the previous film. We were That's in how the early we they were. They put us in the wrong screen. Because, not because we were so early. Shut up. <laughs> this is the road we navigated in to get here. Take a left at the rusty gate. <laughs> We're only three miles to the dirt road. Oh, no wonder it's not on Google Maps. This is the road. This is the road. Oh my word, here we go. Road is a lot worse than I've read and a lot worse than I thought. Yeah, we have literally worked 30 kilometers off the highway. We are doing about 10 kilometers an hour, maybe a little bit more. So it's going to take three hours to get down to the, the, where we need to be, and we've got to come back. So I think we are going to abandon this road because we do have a second option. Quite low hanging trees. Oh, you're not going to get under this. I'm not going to get under that. Is this the ranch? Why do they? We just came to these really low overhanging trees. So they were like seven foot high and they were proper, like, big trees. There was absolutely no way we could fit this van underneath them. So even if we did want to try pushing it and going further, we are blocked by the trees. I also just tried to get the drone up as well and it almost crashed into one of these giant cacti. So that's three for three, <laughs> I think. Time for plan B. There it is. Our plan B was another road that seemed to lead to a village. It was actually marked on Google Maps this time and to begin with, everything seemed much better than the road we'd just been on. 
houses on the street, a relatively smooth road, and no sign of rocks or deep sand. Yet. The road has just turned to sand. Never mind Look gravel. That, yeah. Oh my word, it's going from bad to worse today. We're going all over the place. Hola, 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 hola Trinidad. Uh, Need to book a guide. Yeah. Yeah. We were trying to go and find cave paintings. Like some of the most incredible cave paintings in the world are here in Baja. A lot of them are in an area called the Sierra de San Francisco where you need to go on like like animal pack treks for like a full day. But there's a couple around here that you can drive to. One of them was you could get to from the ranch we we're trying to get to first. But obviously that road is impassable for us. The ones there were seven and a half thousand years old and they depict this big war scene on this overhang and they're so old that even the indigenous people here don't know who made them but we have just passed another car and in there was a guide with some other like with some americans and he was like it's a private ranch you need an official guide to go in we can't even if we did drive all the way down this road we couldn't see it anyway it's not gonna oh. we're not gonna be able to see it anyway okay so now we've got to find somewhere to turn around oh my god that was a fail oh. wasn't it Okay, so now we're trying to find somewhere safe to turn around and we're just surrounded by soft soft sand and lots of loose dirt. So it's a bit tricky. Oh shit. Yeah, stop, stop, stop. Right, can you get me the spade? Yeah. Um, I don't know how much of that I managed to capture, but we just basically got stuck in this, it's like soft sand and dirt and stone. Um, so it's quite difficult to see how hard it is and there were some tracks going off and we just, we just got stuck. But the max tracks came right. through it's the first time we've used them and just gave it some welly and managed to get us out but we need to find somewhere proper that we can turn around. Oh this is just turning into an absolute nightmare. This is just what happens when road trips go wrong. Right, come on here, there must be somewhere. Right, let me go and test out this track. Let me go and test out this track. Please work, please work. Okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's like, it's like the Austin Powers. Oh, you're risking that, oh my God. We're out. Yes. Oh, we turned around? Yeah, we're out. We turned oh. around, <laughs> we managed oh, to turn around. Yeah. Sorry for shouting. Don't, don't you apologize now, everything's yeah, great. No. Do you remember when we drove on that road in Canada and it just started turning into a hiking trail and getting narrower and narrower? And then we had to go up this big bump and something in the back smashed? Or something else in the back has just smashed? No fucking <laughs> way. Right, all the change has fallen out, but right, this is the cut up when we were on the Canadian road. It fell out of here and it smashed and shattered our sink lid, which is why we don't have a sink lid anymore. And this is, I just heard this crash down again and it survived again. And the reason I don't use this cup anymore is it's got a big crack in it. So I'm expecting it to break at any point, but I think it's made of tougher stuff. Whoa, so that was one tire, the other tire, and our front one's up here. Yeah, this is where we got, we got stuck. I put my foot in it, can you tell me? Yeah, it's like up past your ankle. It's almost like we're driving on a dried up riverbed because you can kind of see it's just like so sandy and rocky and look this is like where the river like the banks must be. Oh um, yeah, do you know I think you might be right. I think this is an old dried up riverbed. I know. Who doesn't love a bit of type 2 fun, hey? Oh my god, there oh. we go. Look at yeah. that mate, sweet tarmac. That's it for adventure today, wouldn't you say? We're going right off the main road.
Isn't this just like one of the coolest park ups that we've ever had? It is. It's very um, unique park up, isn't it? It's yeah. Very... Well, like, I've never seen so many giant cacti. It's incredible. Look at Sophia here. She's just tucked away. Just come into the back of the van and after the roads today, there is so much dust everywhere. You see these cacti? These like mammoth, how tall? 40, 30 foot? 30 foot high cacti. They can take 75 years to grow a single arm. So how old are some of these cacti? Like, how old is this cacti forest? How old is this one? This is the biggest one so far. Yeah, it's enormous. Look, I mean, I can't even get it. I've not even got it all in. I'm just... That. Every part is, like, covered in spikes. Don't touch me. Solid. Solid as a rock. Yeah, be careful. Like... <sighs> Well, we didn't make it to the painted caves, the cave paintings. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> oh, we didn't make it to the painted caves, no. Doesn't that sound better than cave paintings? No. The painted caves. The painted caves. We didn't make it to the cave paintings, but we have made it to a giant cactus forest. This is incredible. Don't you feel like a long way from home? A very long way from home. And we're only going to get further. <laughs> well, if we haven't put you off for going to see the cave paintings, I'm going to put some links in the description all about them so that if you're in Baja and you're interested in going to see them, you can find out more information there. I think it goes without saying, the best way to see them is with a guide. Most of them you can't get to without a guide full stop. We found these two on iOverlander. They even said that the roads were passable in a two wheel drive and I double checked them on a couple of blogs which also said the same. So I don't know what they're driving down there in but as you saw, the roads were pretty horrific conditions and it's probably better to go with a guide anyway. We're gonna do that when we come back into Baja in the autumn. We're gonna do it properly this time and not take matters into our own hands. Highly recommend just having a Google of the paintings. They look absolutely incredible. But for now, I think we need to go and see how much of this road is left in our van. Oh, well there's... Oh my gosh. Jesus. We've got some greenery. There's parts of a cactus, like here, here, down there. So I've got the tongs. Like that one. Look at the size of that. Look at that! Wait, I don't even know how that is kicked up in there. God, look, look at that. That's really not as bad as I thought it would be. It's not as bad, but you can see how dark it is. Mm -hmm. um, when we're back in the States, we'll buy a new one and just swap it out. It's always good to do these at the same time as like oil change. So we'll do our oil change every five to seven and a half thousand miles. These are good for like between 10,000 and 60,000, but it depends on what your driving conditions are. But on that note guys, we'll catch you next week. See you next week. Bye.